I remember having a thought not too long ago about what would be the most annoying club to support in the Premier League. And I came to the conclusion that it had to be Tottenham Hotspur for a variety of reasons. And the most obvious is the trophy, blah, blah, blah. And I kind of want to do this video because that is so spoke about. And I've done two videos about the lack of trophies or lack of success. And I feel like I just want to do a video that's not centered around that. And that led to this video. But I picked Tottenham Hotspur as a most annoying club to support. The bubble that they surround themselves in of being close rivals to Arsenal and Chelsea and due to being in top six are therefore compared to City or United or Liverpool at all costs. All their rivals are continuously in theory doing better than them on the pitch and they're even getting stick from London rivals West Ham, Fulham, Crystal Palace. It can really go on. So I would not wish being a Tottenham Hotspur fan on my worst enemy because you will get grief from everywhere and appears it will never end. So comment down below your thoughts on Tottenham Hotspur and do you think things is actually changing? And if not, what needs to be done? Like the video, subscribe if you're new and Mozilla Designs for the best football prints all made by myself and we've got a large variety of Spurs prints too. So use code Spurs for 15% off all items. And let's go. Is anything actually changing at Tottenham Hotspur? Daniel Levy is now entering his 24th campaign as a chairman of Tottenham Hotspur Football Club. And in that time period has seen one major trophy. Is that good enough? Of course it isn't. Especially as they've spent so much money and in terms of revenue, they are absolutely in the elite of the elite of clubs across the world. Facilities, elite, stadium, for many people could be the best stadium in the world. Will this be the year that anything changes? Or will Spurs fans be having the same conversation again next season like they did years prior? Tottenham Hotspur of course went down the route of almost sure thing guaranteed success, getting guaranteed winners, managers that seem to have trophies gravitate to them, success gravitate to them in Jaws, Mourinho and Antonio Conte. That clearly didn't work. But they've gone down a different avenue, a manager that they can build around for a long-term plan, which can bring the club and the fans as a community back together again to make the fans feel much more connected to the players they're watching on the pitch. Something that was lost back in that Mourinho and Conte era. Of course, that is involving Ange. His last name is still hard to pronounce. Ange Postecoglou. Yes, I would just say Ange. The real sense of unity, of belonging between the fans and the club is so powerful. And the best, most recent example is, of course, and they may not like me using this example, but is clearly Arsenal. Again, during the banter era, it was a very toxic club and they had many players that it felt like they weren't really respected or really loved by the fans near the end of it. Arteta came in, let go of those players and brought in those and developed young players, which really brought the club together. And he went out of their way on social media with the involvement of the community. It feels like a completely different club and Spurs have gone down a similar route. However, still has a bit to go. And what is that? you say? Well, simply put, it's just winning more games. The most easiest way to make the fans feel more connected with a club is simply winning games of football. It, it really is not more complicated than that. I can only send you back to the start of last season when they were top of the league and they were winning game after game, playing beautiful football, fast football, brave football. And it all fell apart when he had injuries after injuries. And I remember that game against Chelsea with the ridiculous high line that Ange played. And to me, it's still one of the most baffling games of Premier League football I think I've ever watched. But my good lord, it's a far cry from what happened a year prior with Antonio Conte completely throwing the team under the bus against Southampton and that interview is still incredible to watch to this day. I think it's better to go into the problem. We are not a team. We are 11 players that go into the pitch 
I see selfish players, players that don't want to help each other and don't put their heart into it. This season compared to last, now we are worst in this aspect. When you are not a team, you cannot improve. Now for me, from the outside looking in, I completely believe that Antonio Conte is just looking after himself here and covering his own failures. In many ways, this has been a routine summer for Tottenham Hotspur. After an incredible start to the season last campaign, which had them top of the table at one point, it led to a what felt like inevitable second half drop off where the fears fell into Spurs fans that maybe Ange and his football has been found out. Archie Gray from Leeds, Timo Werner back on loan from RB Leipzig, Bergvall, a young 18 year old Swedish kid which has got a lot of hope behind him and of course the big money signing a couple of days ago of Dom Solanke from Bournemouth and players, particularly fringe players, had to move on. That being the likes of Emerson Royale, Joe Roden, Eric Dyer, Ryan Sessignon, Tangai Ndombele, Perisic, Tanganga. Daniel Levy has been questioned on not backing the managers financially. However, there has been a big money signing on Dom Solanke. He is who they've decided to bet their chips on. And I don't know if it's enough. Last year, of course, many Spurs fans felt like a huge step in the right direction, a positive one, until maybe at the very end. However, into the second season of Ange's campaign, the optimism is still there, absolutely. However, this season has to be the one which they can hold out and to keep that optimism for the fan base. And I don't know if they can this year, mainly because I just simply don't believe that they have the depth to do so. And that's true to them playing not only Premier League, but also Europa League that has two more more games in Europe League as well. So I'm just fearful that if two or three injuries hit the squad, then it could be kind of concerning of who could be waiting behind to drop into their place. Many players in a team appear to be form players, Richarlison being the most obvious example. When he scored nine goals in 10 games in half of the season, after that 10 games, he only scored one goal after that. So you'd like to think that Solanke can come in to help support him. So after this complete shift of project, Will anything actually change? They're going down a youthful route. Of course, Bergvall and of course, there's some young academy prospects in for Sam and Mikey Moore that can be also coming in. That can be a big player for them in the future. I'm just fearful that maybe this is too soon for them. Tottenham Hotspur are a team where you can completely expect them to smash a team 4-0 and then the next week get smashed 4-0. They are so inconsistent. That's why there's the constant meme of Tottenham Hotspur will beat Man City over the Etihad 2-1 and then lose the next game 1-0 to Luton. And same thing could be said again this year. They'll go beat City but then go lose a home to, to Southampton. If I was to pick out one weakness in a team, it probably would be the defence. But then there's the midfield, which Bissouma for me just perfectly reflects how I see Spurs, where he is just exactly where Spurs are at. He's a complete gamble with a lack of real cover in that position on the pitch, who is completely a confidence player who blows hot and cold in preseason again has looked relatively decent. You know, drives forward of the ball, he's athletic, he beats the press, he breaks up attacks, he's, he, he's got a goal threat sometimes. However, if he's not confident, then he is absolutely a passenger. Spurs absolutely needs a dominating DM who can protect the defence. That is an absolute sure thing. Someone to play that kind of Rodri role. They don't have that and they absolutely need that. And it may not mean too much, but it's glaringly obvious for me. Papi Matasar, Basuma, Bentanker, Oliver Skip. I just feel like it is incredibly inconsistent and is very attack minded. But defensively, I think that is a real weak point. Bergvall does appear to be very exciting, but he is still 18, so he may still have a bit to go. So all in all, to kind of end off this video, I feel like Spurs are going down the route of having some attractive footballers that can be fun to watch come in. However, as an actual team in a unit, I just can't see them lasting through an entire campaign as it currently stands, unless if they bring in three or four more players that can really help out. Tottenham's current best strength is Ange himself a man to rally behind with a style of football that is attractive and is exciting. The main concern is for some fans is a lack of plan B is something that has been thrown around a lot. We all know how he wants to play and he will consistently want to play that style of football no matter what. And that style of play is high pressing, possession based football with fast paced attacking movements from all his players. From the goalkeeper all the way to the attacker. However, I do believe 
the goalpost has moved a little bit as prior to the season beginning the expectation about Spurs was rather poor after losing Harry Kane from something that looked like potentially a transitional season turned into a season where it was seen as a failure in the end that they didn't get top four by some fans that's how I see Spurs tell me your thoughts down below in comments but with Ange in charge he's a man that you can back as he is a good bloke and as they say See you later, mate.